You know, when, when the founders got together to create the Constitution in Philadelphia in 1787, they saw Congress as being the lead component of our government, not the executive branch. That was the original vision. What's happened over the course of the last two plus centuries is that has become inverted. The power, the money, the resources pretty much reside with the executive branch. And in the absence of having the resources and the necessary information, Congress is always playing catch up. Congress is always behind the eight ball. And that's why these reforms are critical in order to level that playing field and restore a genuine check and balance on executive branch activities. The first vote in the House of Representatives in the new Congress will be on the rules package. This is an opportunity for members who care about civil liberties, who are otherwise often sidelined in important national security decisions, to level the playing field back in their favor. The one place in a democracy where you actually get some oversight and get some buy-in from the American people on intelligence programs is when they come before their congressional overseers and explain what's going on. Unfortunately, Congress has fewer oversight tools in, in the intelligence area than they do in any other area to actually check up on the intelligence community. There are more than 500,000 federal employees and contractors with top secret compartmentalized clearance, but yet we can't even give a handful of congressional staff access to highly classified information. This doesn't make any sense. When you have a handful of congressional staffers trying to oversee entire departments and divisions of the executive branch, with dozens or hundreds or thousands of employees, you have to find a way to level the playing field. As a former congressional staffer, I can tell you that many rank and file members of Congress, both Republicans and Democrats, feel out of the loop when it comes to making decisions and conducting oversight over the intelligence community. So when we talk about some of the other oversight tools that are lacking in a congressional context, there's no question that the legal barrier to having the Government Accountability Office or the Congressional Budget Office or other congressional support agencies engage in a much deeper level of oversight and assistance with oversight is a huge problem. The executive branch, in so many cases, holds all the cards. Over the past 15 years, individuals in both parties have been concerned with executive overreach, whether it was with George W. Bush or Barack Obama. The rules vote in January is the opportunity for both sides to come together and stop the overreach once and for all.